Well, Fox News is getting reaction from the Iranian opposition to all this. Prince Reza Pahlavi, the son of the Shah, telling Fox News, quote, this is not human error, this is a crime against humanity. He who has irresponsibly empowered his thugs to fire at will at innocence bears full responsibility. Enough is enough. Khamenei and his regime must go. The National Union for Democracy in Iran telling us, quote, they want freedom and dignity brought about by a secular democracy that has friendly relationships with the United States and the world. The Iranian people deserve the support of the United States and its government in their noble struggle for national sovereignty and liberty. And Maryam Rajavi, the leader of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, saying, quote, all Iranians, especially the youth, express support and solidarity with the families of the victims of this horrific crime by the mullahs. Prosecute and punish those responsible. Ali Khamenei, as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Hassan Rouhani, and IRGC commanders. The Syrian people have seen many sad days, Mr. President, uh, since 2011. Uh, but this day uh, is potentially one of the saddest because it is the first time that a Security Council member has chosen to play politics with humanitarian assistance. That is British Ambassador to the United Nations Karen Pierce dressing down the Russians on Syria, the humanitarian catastrophe that so sadly continues at the hands of Putin, Assad, the Iranians, and General Qassam Soleimani. This is the Iranian people continue to take to the streets in angry defiance of their government, calling for the regime to go. What could happen? Ambassador Pierce joins us now here in the studio. Ambassador, good to see you. Thank you, Eric. It's pretty shocking to see these uh, protests growing. Uh, we're told that they are chanting death to the dictators, tearing down banners of Soleimani and, and others. What is your reaction, your government's reaction to what the people or some of the people in Iran are doing? Uh, these are potentially interesting developments, uh, as you say, Iranian protesters uh, taking to the streets uh, after the downing of the airliner. Uh, I think it's too early uh, to say what it means, uh, but I think everyone is watching Iran very closely at the moment. I hope it will be another spur to the Iranian government to de-escalate tensions, uh, to stop pursuing nuclear weapons, and, as it were, to come in from the cold. Uh, our Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, has made this call to them. There's a window for diplomacy now. Uh, we hope Iran will take it, uh, but only Iran can take that decision. We can't take it for her. What do you think the Iranian leaders should do? Do you call for meetings? Do you call for uh, discussions uh, about this specifically? What does your government want? There are very many ways to signal that one is ready uh, for talks. President Trump, uh, Mr. Pompeo, and my own government, Boris Johnson, Dominic Raab, as well as the French, uh, we have all uh, made overtures to the Iranian government uh, suggesting that they take advantage of a diplomatic window uh, that's now appeared and that they come in from the cold. Uh, I would think that that sort of thing is normally done quietly uh, in the first instance with senior officials meeting privately, perhaps to prepare a way forward so that leaders can meet. There are many ways of doing it. I think the important thing is that the Iranian government takes the step. Uh, what is the Iranian government doing? Are those overtures reciprocated? Uh, they have sent a variety of messages, but the messages tend to be very in the moment, very uh, transactional. Uh, they have not, as far as I know, uh, accepted either the US, French or British uh, offers. Uh, we really would urge them to do so. They can see what their own people uh, think of the current situation. Uh, now is a very good time uh, to de-escalate tensions. At the same time, of course, we mustn't take our eye off the nuclear question. Uh, we really don't want to Iran to require a nuclear weapon. And of course, the past few months they had protests and the Iranian regime killed about 1,500 of these protesters, didn't even allow their families to mourn those young people who were killed. Uh, the president has tweeted out asking the Iranian government not to kill the protesters. Does your government agree? Oh, we absolutely agree with that. People have uh, a fundamental human right uh, to freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, and that includes the right to peaceful protest. Uh, now, sometimes those older protests uh, had a variety of uh, motivations, uh, but I think the important thing is that the Iranian government needs to listen to its people, uh, and it needs to de-escalate the current situation, and that's in their hands. We've made our offer. And one of your colleagues, the British ambassador to Tehran, Rob McCary, went to a vigil. He goes to this vigil for about 15 minutes uh, and leaves, and they, then they arrest him. 
Well, as, um, as we've said, as Dominic Raab has said, that is a flagrant violation of international law. There is a convention called the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Uh, it governs what happens to diplomats abroad uh, in countries so they can go about their duties uh, in safety and security, representing their governments. That's what Ambassador McCare was doing. He went to pay his respects at the vigil. It was in honour of the Iranian students who'd lost their lives on the airliner. Uh, quite natural that he should go, especially since British people were killed as well. Uh, he then left that uh, gathering when it started to turn into more of a protest uh, and he went innocently off to have his hair cut and then the Iranians oh, arrested him. But he's, doing, he's okay? He is now okay, okay, thank you. He was released eventually mm -hmm. and we have been in touch with the Iranians to protest very strongly about this breach of international law. And on Syria, Qassam Soleimani was the, the mastermind, the so-called terrorist mastermind of this horrendous uh, catastrophe that is there. And you dealt with it, with it in the Security Council, and it still hasn't ended, and the Russians have been blocking some humanitarian aid? Uh, yes, they have. Um, what happened on Friday was that the Russians, in effect, held the Security Council uh, to ransom. They also held the people of northeastern Syria to ransom because they refused to allow uh, the UN to send aid through what are called cross-border crossings so that you can go into Syria from Turkey, Iraq and other countries without the Syrian government's permission. And the reason that's needed is because the Syrian government will not allow assistance to reach all the communities most in need. It wasn't just general General Soleimani, uh, who was instrumental in Syria, uh, I do want again to call out the Russians, but also the Syrian government themselves. Governments are supposed to look after their people, and yet the Syrian government won't issue permits for aid, and they won't help get the aid to people most in need. And finally, do you feel with the, the dynamics perhaps changing that the Syria issue and, and, the, and the turmoil will be reduced? Oh, that's, um, that's an interesting question. I mean, we had some footage earlier of the sad death of Sultan Qaboos. Uh, he has been uh, a very strong moderating force uh, in the Gulf. He has very uh, wise advice uh, for leaders, and he has tried to keep productive working relationships uh, with all sides. Uh, I think it's good news that his successor has pledged to continue his foreign policy. Uh, we have Britain has had a relationship with Oman uh, for over 200 years, uh, so we will be in very close touch with them uh, and helping them keep regional stability going. Well, we, I know both sides, uh, both governments will be looking and watching out to make sure the protesters are protected Absolutely. in Tehran and the regime does not resort to what they've done in the past. Ambassador Karen Pierce of the United Kingdom, thank you for coming in, in the studio today. Thank you very much, Eric. Always a pleasure.